Oh, She's man. picking up speed. Today on Rock the Park, Whoa! we're rocking the Caribbean. This place is known for having some of the greatest beaches in the world. Case in point. This tiny island is packed with some of the wildest. Ooh, one just flew by. There are bats all over here. Most unexpected. It's a different world. And incredible adventures we've attempted yet. It's you up against the deep, dark abyss. And it all starts now. Wait for this all day. Woo! I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. Welcome to the island of St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. About two thirds of this island is a national park. So yeah, we're in paradise. We're soaking in the view for a few minutes as we plan how best to explore this 20 square mile island. St. John sits in a cluster that forms the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, known for large coral reefs, clear water, and marine life. Virgin Islands National Park is on tiny St. John in the Caribbean Sea. 1,100 miles southeast of Miami. Our plan is to explore the island's tropical forests, coral reefs, and just bask in the warm waters of the Caribbean. I've got a feeling we're in for the time of our lives. St. John has a ton of wildlife, like this colorful iguana. You always think of iguanas being this perfect green, but he's got this red mixed into his head and down the back of the spines on his tail. This is a lesser Antillean iguana. They are now in danger, due in part to habitat loss and hunting. You can definitely see he's lost his tail because it just cuts off right there. Yeah. Iguanas will shed their tails to escape predators, and in most cases, it'll grow back. Time for us to change into our hiking gear and hit the trail. The hike's about two and a half miles, but we go down about 900 feet in elevation from up high on the cliffs all the way down to the ocean. There's tons of ferns and lots of really awesome trees that just look like they're straight out of the Amazon. Speaking of, it's a big old tree. Whoa. This is like a wall, but it's really a root. Oh, that is one sturdy root. One of the planet's largest trees, the Kapok can grow over 200 feet tall. The large buttress roots help support it. So we're marching, making some great progress. And then I spot something that kind of freaks me out. Oh my gosh. Oh, I think that's a golden orb. Look at the size of that thing. That's a big old spider. Oh, he's eating oh, the oh, butterfly. Man. Golden orbs spin the strongest and largest webs of any spider, reaching six feet across. All right, so we've got ourselves a little deer, and he looks like he's a buck. Got a nice rack on him, yeah, you know? Yeah. Deer are not native to St. John. They were brought from the U.S. centuries ago. Hey, bud. Uh, oh, he looked at us. Yeah, oh, he that? sees us, yeah. <laughs> so cool. That's awesome. <laughs> now, bugs and animals aren't the only things you have to look out for on this trail. There are all these different kinds of plants, and some of them hurt. This plant looks like a saw. Both sides of it just have these sharp little thorns on them. Chop down a tree with that thing. This is the false pineapple, brought here to create natural fence lines during the plantation era. It's these types of plants that you don't get to see every day because they only thrive in environments like this. The forest is making a comeback. For hundreds of years, this land was cleared to grow sugarcane. In fact, you can still spot the old plantation walls. Look at this thing. Oh, man. Hey, come check this out quick. That's coral. Yeah. That right there is brain coral. Isn't that amazing? Brain coral's calcium carbonate skeleton is rock hard and was used to shore up these old walls. All the human history that is scattered throughout this trail makes it extremely unique. Oh, man, these are the petroglyphs. See them on the rock? Oh, yeah. 
we are looking at petroglyphs from the Taino people who inhabited these islands well before any people from Europe came over here. If you look at this guy, it looks like a face. You see the two eyes, the mouth, even some ears. Those are some big ears. <laughs> it is very cool, though. They left their mark. <laughs> We walk out of the woods and there's this huge structure that is just perfectly intact. We're at the sugar mill. Oh man, this oh. thing is well preserved. During the 17 and 1800s, Reef Bay Sugar Mill processed sugar cane to make sugar, molasses, and rum that was shipped to Europe and America. I wanna see what's inside of this place. Oh, bat, bat. Oh, he's looking at us. Even with their 16-inch wingspan, these guys won't hurt us. They're Jamaican fruit bats, and they pollinate flowers, disperse seeds, and eat things like mosquitoes. Well, we might have woken him up from his nap. Oh, yes. Bats. The beach! Yes! This place is known for having some of the greatest beaches in the world. Case in point. Reef Bay is one of several picture-perfect beaches on the island. And since 44% of the national park is underwater, Woo! Oh, we can't resist diving in. The coral is awesome. But as we're about to discover, the sea really comes alive after dark. It's you with your little flashlight up against the deep, dark abyss. We're on our way to Lynn Point at the eastern tip of St. John in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The sun is setting and we're about to go on our first night dive. It's gonna be a little eerie in the dark, but at night, we're told some animals you normally wouldn't see during the day come out to play. I'm imagining just going down in the water and just being like, oh my gosh, I can't see anything. Ultimately, guys, what you're gonna be able to see is right there. So you're gonna see the circumference of this light, and that's pretty much it. Literally, as the seconds go by, you get more and more comfortable, and then you start to realize that it's, it's awesome. I'm not seeing any light from the sun anymore. It's just pure black down there. I think the time has come. All right, see you in there. As soon as I point my light down, I see these big, big fish swimming around. There's a big tarpon down there. Really? Oh, yeah. All right, I'm coming. One, two, three, step. <laughs> Do you see that? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if you didn't know what a tarpon was, you could think that's a shark. Oh, that's easily. That's a big fish. That's a huge fish. Tarpon can grow eight feet long and swim in schools of up to 30 fish. As we're descending, I'm looking at straight black below me. And it feels like you're in outer space. It's you with your little flashlight up against the deep, dark abyss. The first thing I see when we get to the bottom is the reef, and it is just vibrant. Underwater, colors appear dim or faded in daylight. But in the dark, our dive lights ignite the coral's bold colors. At night, the coral's long, wavy polyps come out to feed in the dark. The tentacles sway and reach for passing food. I look down and I see a fish. It's a blowfish. We are hovering right over this guy, and he doesn't seem to mind. He's just continuing along, and we're able to just observe him. It is so cool. When blowfish feel threatened, they puff up. Now, this guy's staying small, which tells me we're not threatening him, and he's not scared of us. 200 species of fish and 2,000 species of coral paint the reef in colorful patterns. They share their home with a strange mix of crabs, mollusks, and thousands of bizarre creatures. Like this arrow crab, which looks more like a daddy long legs. I'm just scanning with my dive light, and then all of a sudden, something is on the bottom of the ocean. It's a stingray. Stingrays don't look like fish, but they are. Their wide, flat bodies hide on the ocean floor, while their large eyes keep watch for prey like shrimp and crab. We're swimming along, and we all spot this amazing seashell. So we go in for a closer look. 
all of a sudden, the shell starts to move. This guy is some sort of conk, and he's got places to be, because he's going fast. <laughs> it's actually a giant hermit crab. They're known to take over discarded shells or large snails, like conks. There's so much marine life to see that we could stay down here all night, but our time is up. Woo! Oh my gosh. Oh, that was so cool. It took a minute to get used to the darkness, but after you did, you kind of just followed your light and it let you just focus in on one thing at a time, which was kind of cool. That was such an amazing experience, man. There was something eerie but calming about diving at night. You feel just so at peace. That solitude ends tomorrow. When we hit the high seas again, this time to tackle another first. It's our final day in paradise, and after two days of exploring some amazing wildlife, we've decided it's time to tackle the high seas in a catamaran. Hey, how's it going? Good morning, guys. Colton. Colton, Kendall. Kendall, nice to meet Jack. you. Jack. Jack. You guys are going to be great. Come on. OK. All right. We're in Cinnamon Bay on the island's north coast. We've never sailed before, and our instructor, Kendall, is showing us the ropes. Kendall's definitely a laid back guy. But then he starts talking math. He's whipping out all these angles, drawing these lines, talking degrees. We're going to work at four quadrants, 0, 15, 45, 90. So easy. It's all physics, right? He's showing us the different angles that you want the sail to be in, how to go into the wind and how to go downwind. Once we get out there and start sailing, I have a feeling this is going to make a lot more sense. This 16-foot-long catamaran can reach speeds of up to 23 knots, or 26 miles per hour, all by the power of the wind. This is your tiller crossbar. This is how you're going to control your boat. Jack, you're going to sheet in. That's pulling your line in, OK? Yeah. Did you get it? I got it. All I right. got it. The wind's going to be variable, soft, mellow, easy. And then we might have a couple punches. Those strong gusts could be trouble for a couple of rookies like us. This could fill with wind, lift the boat up, and flip us. Hopefully, we don't get too banged up. The wind has picked up quite a bit, and we were just told that there's a good chance we're going to flip. We don't want to make too big of mistakes. Little small ones are OK. Not, nothing too big, all right? One, two, three. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of moment of truth. Let's go. <laughs> Immediately, the wind just starts to shoot us out of the bay. Oh, man. Whoa. These are not slow boats. No, they're not. We are picking up speed. Yeah. That's just part of catamaran sailing. We're going to do our first change of course, and it's probably not going to go that well. OK. Pull the sail in as tight as possible for me, Jack. Colt, head into the wind as much as possible. Colt, you're OK. Don't panic. <laughs> we come to our first turn, and it is just craziness. Colton steers us to get our turn started. Then I switch the sail. That was an upwind turn called attack. And then both of us just have to jump across the boat to the other side. If we don't shift weight to level the boat quickly, we'll lose speed. And worse, we could flip. Whoa, we're losing it. Oh, no. <laughs> you have to do your moves really smooth. We're in practice mode. We're turning over and over and over again. Go, Jack, like you mean it. Yep. Come up, oh, come man. up, come up, all the way up and through. Jack, tune put the sail up. Tune in. The danger zone is instead of going up, you go down. We are going to flip hard. I mean bad. Bit by bit, we're getting better, and we're starting to nail this thing. Hold, you're doing really well. Just keep it steady. Go for the speed. Here we go, Jack. All right! Yeah! yeah. Now we're racing. Looking good. Whoa! Whoa. All right. <laughs> yeah! It took us a while to master our upwind turns. And then Kendall says, it's time to go downwind, which is much harder. A downwind turn is called a jibe and is more dangerous because both sails stay filled with wind throughout the move. Cole, turn me downwind. 
out of nowhere, there's just this big whack. Whoa! I'm thinking we just did something wrong. We're going down. Jeez. And it's violent. So listen. Le <laughs> that is real violent, man. <laughs> Cole, twist us out through that turn. Nice and slow. Let her go. How's that? That was better. OK, downwind, jibe, a lot more violent, OK? Yeah. That's just the reality of it. We're feeling confident. We've mastered both turns. Now it's time to see if we can get back to our beach. We're going so fast right now, and my adrenaline is through the roof. Feels like we're getting air. We, we are coming in hot. Steer us right onto that sand. You'll be all right. Be positive, Colt. We got wind. Oh, man. Big wind. Whoa. You're OK. Be positive. Be Whoa. positive. Be positive. Go for speed. Oh, Ooh, I hit the sand. Oh, no. Let it out. Oh. oh. Gosh, that's intense. Oh, man, that was real intense. I'm speechless. Yeah, that I was, kind of am, too. That was just like, yeah. Do we have the workings of a couple sailors, or? I think you're good. Now I have to ask, are you ready to take this out by yourself? And I think you should go for it. We're normally up for any <laughs> challenge, but we're not sure we're ready to sail solo yet. And Mother Nature isn't helping reassure us either. Typically, when you see dark gray clouds like that coming at you in the Caribbean, that's a pretty big smack coming down the beach, maybe in about 15 minutes. We're learning to sail in the US Virgin Islands, and it's time to take the 16-foot catamaran out by ourselves. A sudden squall has passed over, and it's go time. All right, remember, straight in. Yep. You can definitely see the wind has calmed down. We're moving, but not that fast. There's just enough wind to give us a chance to nail some tacks and jibes on our own. I'm starting it. You're going this way, it. right? Yep, turn okay. it out. We're... Come on, catch some wind. Here we go. Here we go. I think you're good. OK. Nice. You did it. Well done. We're cruising, and then we realize the other side of sailing, the relaxing side. This is so great. One minute it was chaotic, and now we're just sitting back, taking in the view of the island. It does not get better than this. You feel that breeze? Whoa, we're yeah. getting some wind. Yeah, all right, all we're right. good. This we're gonna, we're, we're gonna cruise to the finish line. Oh, dude, it's picking up. Oh, boy. OK, so when we hit shore, you know what to do? Uh, release this. Yep. But not a moment before you feel that sand. A little to the left. We've hit sand. All right. All right. Bring her up. We did it. A feeling this won't be our last time on one of these catamarans. I, I want one now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was a blast. I thought you did great. It was great in those few hours to get to see both sides of it. For a beginner, you saw it as rough as we would let someone out in. <laughs> and then on the other side, you saw her just totally tune down and be gentle on you. Well, thanks again. It was awesome hanging so out with you guys. So much fun. All right, maybe we'll see you on the high seas. OK, that sounds good. <laughs> what an incredible place. We pushed our boundaries on this trip. Sailing was crazy. I had no idea that it was going to be that chaotic. And then night diving. Again, it's something that I never pictured we'd do. And we knocked off two brand new things right here in the Virgin Islands. Two completely different situations and environments. When you finally figure it out, it's the greatest feeling in the world. This place is paradise. Absolutely. Virgin Islands National Park and the little island of St. John left a big impression. And remember. Hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. I got so tan out there. I'll tell you one thing. This hat is never coming off of my <laughs> head. Don't think that you're going to be captain every time we go sailing. This hat means I'm the captain. I'm captain next time. 
I don't think so. I'm driving. All right, all aboard. On to the next park. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.